the leader in the market today. You can stop the recording, John. Um, maybe. Um, what about now? Perfect. Here okay. you are. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, well, the uh, first half is converting. I'll have to break it up into two different recordings and do part one and part two. I don't think anybody would really care. Um, okay. It is kind of cool to see. We got a, I don't know, over a dozen subscribers so far and people have been okay. watching it. So there we go. All right. Continue. And was asking me about my background. So um, since 2011, um, uh, that's when I joined Leo Software, uh, which is, uh, which made Repro the leading revenue automation project, a uh, product. Uh, I worked with that till 2021. Mm -hmm. I worked from 2011, 12 to 2021. Um, that's when the product took off and then it got sold to Zora. And then I worked with Zora for a few years, worked on Zora you know, billing platform, um, all the way you know, start to end the whole life cycle of revenue from CPQ to revenue automation. And then um, the right rev was started, uh, you know, and then I was invited to join right rev, which is um, a similar product. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say similar. Um, it's uh, it's to do revenue automation, uh, same thing, but it's on a different platform, different technology, and uh, it's uh, on a different, uh, total different rules. And um, they wanted to make it like, you know, 2.0, basically, revenue automation 2.0, you know, lighter, better, uh, more scalable, more, um, you know, easily available, and there are more Salesforce customers, so it's going to be on Salesforce. So. so then I started working on that, and then I worked for a couple of years there, and then I had some family uh, obligations where I did not, um, I was not able to give 100% to the job, then I said, I'm going to quit for some time take some time off. Um, so I took like eight, nine months off. Um, I had to take care of some family issues. And then now I'm back into consulting. Before revenue automation, um, I started my career way back in 90s as an Oracle DBA. I worked as Oracle DBA and then I worked as Oracle applications. I implemented and then I managed Oracle applications. I worked as Oracle application consultant. Uh, for many years, and then even managed a big team of DBAs and developers and QA people. So most of the life was in Oracle applications, and then I moved to revenue automations in the last 12 years, 11, 12 years. Nice. So were you so, working remotely before remote working remotely was cool? <laughs> actually, um, you know, this is strange because I started at Right Rev in 2021, that's when everybody was working from home. We were the only people who were going to work because wow. we were just five people who had started. I mean, we were like the core five people and we were doing all the brainstorming and designing sessions. And I wanted to be part of that uh, because the product was still being built, uh, being designed and built at that time. So we were five people going into that building with five people with the mask and everything and then going upstairs and locking us up, locking up, locking us, locking locking up ourselves. <laughs> I can't find the town. Uh, we were locked in a room and then we would whiteboard the design, um, you know, uh, the whole day and then work on it for three days. Right. So that's when, COVID, I mean, the vaccines were not even out at that time. So we were the first, only people who were going into work and then working there and building the product and working with the product team and engineering team. And then once the product, um, was ready to be sold and implemented that's when we started doing some of the remote work so um which is very strange because everybody was at home and i was the only one who was going to work in the building so but it was cool it was, was a lot of times. design yeah we had times but a lot of brainstorming designing which was very exciting i was very very excited to go to work actually so i do have a question um with the advancements in ai do you what is everyone's opinion on how that will impact um, employees in the tech sector? We've seen how automations have hurt the service industry, um, things like, you know, shopping for groceries, even um, Amazon is implementing a new, um, I just read about it on a supermarket news website. I for, it just, what they're implementing, it, it blew my mind, but it, it flipped out of my mind what it was. Do you think AI is going to start having a negative impact on career opportunities for people who are, let's say, just exiting college and going into the workforce? 
It already has. Because a lot of these entry level jobs that kids are going to do out of college, companies going to say, we're just going to use an AI for that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But even before the, you know, as, as you both probably have seen, I, I'm, I like making fun of AI in as public a forum as possible. Yes. Because it's, it's like, it's new, but it's not. I was using AI, not to sound like a total hipster, but I was using AI back in 2017, otter.ai for transcription. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really cool. I've used AI tools. I use AI tools currently. Uh, Grammarly's got a couple of plugins and stuff that'll help you figure out like how to write a sentence better or whatever. So even though I'm a public curmudgeon about it, I've actually used AI tools myself. I think the technology is really cool. There's a lot of possibility there. What I think a lot of people get, that when when the car was mass produced, you know, a lot of blacksmiths went out of business. Horses, nobody has horses these days, but you used to. It's going to change fundamentally the landscape of things, but it already has been. Mm -hmm. People haven't really seen it as much because it wasn't consumer friendly. Chat GPT made AI consumer friendly. Now it's as easy to use as Google. It's like you could buy things online before Amazon, but right. nobody knew how and it wasn't that easy. And then Amazon came along and everybody's, now everybody hates, oh, Amazon has destroyed small businesses and stuff. Okay, stop buying stuff from Amazon. Well, but damn, they make it convenient. Exactly, you gotta pick your poison here. Mm -hmm. With AI, I mean, it's already the the easier a job is to learn, the quicker it can be replaced by AI. You know, so, um, anything that in the physical world, you have mechanical advantages and stuff. So as soon as somebody figured out how to make a wheelbarrow, I'm certainly going to, I'm not going to take shovel full by shovel full across the lawn. No, I'm going to go out and buy a wheelbarrow and then I'm going to fill that. Then I'm going to move it across. It's the same type of principle here. We have a new tool. We have AI that can generate long strings of text, uh, uh, essentially in a split second, right? Mm -hmm. You tell it what you want. Mm -hmm. I wanna write uh, a five page essay about the civil war uh, and a 10th grade level or whatever, boom, 30 seconds later, you have your paper. But the thing that's gonna, the counter to that though, is that the student is not actually learning the material or the person is not actually doing the work. And, and chat GPT, while it generates new stuff and everybody's like, oh, look, it's generating text that's never been written before. Okay, fine but it's still deriving that text based off of text that other people read. So if you are a person who has new ideas, ChatGPT is not an idea generator. And I'm sure that somebody's gonna, well, nobody's gonna watch this really, but if somebody watches this, they might troll me and say, no, it does help with idea generation or whatever. Okay, fine. You tell it, give me 10 ideas of businesses to start. That's no different than every listicle article we've seen from BuzzFeed or like the 10 best businesses to start in 2024. Look at that original headline. And it's going to be the same shit that was on the list from 2023. Mm -hmm. So will it change the landscape? Yes. And it already has. We will find ways to use it. It's a wild stallion right now. It needs to be tamed. It needs rules. It needs structure. It's going to get abused. People are going to use it to do good things. People are going to use it to do bad things. It's the idea of technological determinism of a new technology is introduced and we don't really know what's going to happen. The There's a podcaster I listen to a lot. His name is Cal Newport. He talks a lot about this type of stuff. And he, one of his examples is the Facebook like button. The Facebook like button did not originate as an idea to get people addicted to their phones and sell advertising and gamify the whole thing with how many likes did I get? How many likes did I get? But that's what it became. It started because the software developers saw, oh man, a lot of people are putting just one word answers in here. Awesome. Like, this is cool. Mm -hmm. 
neat in the comments. Why don't we just make it really easy to show that you've seen the post and you appreciated it? Like button. Well, then now I have a metric. How many likes did I get? Did you like <laughs> my post? Did you like my post? You didn't like my post. And then we go, oh, let's weaponize this against the psychology. Now, if you're a business that has a Facebook page and you want more likes, which is a useless metric, I've never been able to, for some reason, my landlord won't accept my Facebook likes as rent payment. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but you have, you have fake metrics, but people are chasing these fake metrics because they feel like they should matter. How many likes did you get? Well, you're only going to get likes if you say polarizing things, you know, or you're, and then it's just this whole algorithmically based is completely inhuman what's happening below the surface. But that's how a lot of this stuff goes. AI is going to be no different and uh, it's going to get used and abused and rules are going to have to get put around it. But the law will never get passed as fast as the technology develops. I mean, my God, how long does it take to make a decision in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> so technology, Washington, D.C. doesn't stand a chance compared to uh, Silicon Valley or wherever software is being developed these days. And uh, I don't know, I should probably end my rant there. Feel free to chime in with your own thoughts, too. So I guess I was asking more along the lines. So when Kranti mentioned locking themselves in a room for three days uh, or to you know whiteboard the ideas, is that something that in the current time frame with this AI stuff that it could have the the machine could have done that? Uh, I'm not sure uh, for a software of this complex nature. If I'm whiteboarding, say for example, uh, I'm just throwing, not knowing what I'm saying. Uh, maybe if I want to write a story about something, you know, I want to put it on, a, it has to be a romantic comedy. It has to cater to a certain age. It has to be, have a, you know, holiday feel to it. You know, then, you know, I can tell, give those inputs to AI or ChatGPT or whatever, and then it can generate you know, 10 scripts for me, you know, okay. for the, but if it's a complex product design, uh, I'm not sure if, you know, chat GPT is or AI is there yet, you know, uh, not knowing fully, you know, where it stands in terms of this complex nature. Um, I personally think it may not. Um, I think it's more in terms of writing and, you know, those things, I think it's going to help. Um, give more input. That's my personal opinion. I may be totally wrong, but that's my personal opinion. I, I like to joke that until a client can give me a clear, concise, consistent business requirement, I got nothing to worry about from AI. Mm -hmm. um, I have heard, I, I do have friends that say it helps, it helps, it helps. Maybe that's where my issue is. Maybe it's up here. Can you still hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a friend who said it, it's very helpful for user story generation, but when I think about it, okay, maybe it helps for user story generation as a sales user. I want to create a quote so that I can quote products to my customer, which is a lame user story that really doesn't tell you any, okay, great. You bought CPQ. You can create a quote. It's not fucking rocket science here. Mm -hmm. Um, but can an AI develop a nuanced, complex, sophisticated user story that truly captures the essence of the business and what it needs to do? By the time you put in enough prompts, you might as well write the damn user story yourself. And then you'll actually really understand for yourself what the user story is. And if you just, okay, maybe it gets you a rough draft. You still have to edit the thing to make it accurate. Same thing with using an AI to generate your resume. A lot of people are like, oh, I used an AI to generate my resume and made my resume in 30 seconds. Great. If it made your resume in 30 seconds, it made everybody else's in 30 seconds. And guess what? They're all generic. Mm -hmm. They have The AI doesn't know about your personal experience. It doesn't know your metrics. It doesn't know your impact on the businesses and organizations you've worked with. It's just going to say, 
whatever is on the job description that you feed it as an input, it's going to use that as the basis of its output. And you're not really going to be that much further along. The value of the resume comes from helping the person reading it understand what you bring to the table. What have you done in past jobs? Not how can you generically write something that's kind of like the the job bullets, you know? Right. And um, teachers were really worried at first. Well, my kid's going to, what if the kids start using uh, AI to write their papers? Great. I don't care. I'm the teacher. I'm going to say, hey, Aaron, you uh, you mentioned this pair in this paragraph on the third page of your essay, which was very well written, by the way. It, interestingly, it, it doesn't sound at all like how you speak, but, you know, it's it's interesting. Can you tell me what you meant by this sentence? And then you watch the fear flood their face and the blood leave it. And they go, uh, cool. F mm -hmm. write your own damn paper. This book that I'm working on is going to kill me. Uh, but I want to do the work. What pride and satisfaction can I take if I have a AI write a book for me? Okay, I fed it a bunch of prompts. I didn't write the book. No. Right? Yeah. It's going to also be a very mediocre book. It might be mediocre anyway. But it's going to be a mediocre book that doesn't sound like me. When you read my book, it should sound like me. Well, you could train the AI to sound like you. Do I want to train an AI to sound like me or do I just want to write something that sounds like me? Right. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a battle of like, perhaps not as, uh, perhaps not of cinematic quality, mm -hmm. but it'll be the humans versus the machines. It's the, it's the same thing. Dystopian sci-fi stuff has been talking about forever. Humans versus the machines. And it's, as long as you can be creative and still have humanity, social skills are going to take on a new uh, a new premium. Oh, you can talk to other human beings. There are consultants out there making four hundred dollars an hour teaching kids how to talk on the telephone. Oh yeah, I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> I do that for free as a parent. Like. <laughs> <laughs> right these kids don't know how to talk on the telephone it's, you call the number and you start speaking to your friend that's what you do it's not a complex process here but they're so far removed from this like we're just adults having conversations mm -hmm. talking about stuff it's not that crazy it's not that complicated uh -huh. but they don't know how to do it social skills are atrophying as technology progresses we've never been more connected yet socially isolated Mm -hmm. right totally anyway there's a whole rant I, it's turned into way more of a rant than i expected <laughs> ranting with garbins i like it <laughs> i mean the, the my personal calendly meeting is uh it's called gab with garvins that could be that could be a good one i have an, a, another podcast idea of, like dating and relationships called girl talk with garvins where i just interview <laughs> Uh, female friends of mine or people they introduced me to about their experiences with dating and relationships because I think it, I think it would be an interesting take um, but that's a whole other that's a whole other topic that has nothing to do with revenue clock and you don't yeah. have any time in your schedule like you're no I don't I don't <laughs> but uh, once the statistics and calculus are done things are starting to fall off which is nice jazz band concert tonight so okay jazz band's done last night my teacher came out from Chicago and taught a jujitsu seminar at my school. That's been uh, taking bandwidth over the past. So that's done. Okay, great. Uh, calculus and statistics are are done the 13th of December. Uh, just the way the schedule lined up, I will have my statistics exam immediately followed by my calculus exam on the same day. Four straight hours of final exams. <laughs> Um, I told that to my calculus teacher today. And he's like, wait, really? Then he offered, well, you could take it on another day if you want to. I said, no, we all know how it's going to end up. So I might as well just get it over with. And then I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is finish those exams, cry for an hour, drive to O'Hare and then <laughs> head to New York because World Tour New York is the next day. World Tour Chicago is the previous week. So we'll see that. And then the POC that I'm working on with my client, that's going to end by the end of the month. So I'm entering a slow period. Get ready for the holidays. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't really want to take on anything too crazy for the rest of the year. And then at the same time, I'm going, but I still got to generate some revenue because mm-hmm. it's been, it's been a light year on the consulting side and I'm not the only one. Other friends of mine have, uh, you know, seen slowness as well. My revenue, my personal income has dropped off a cliff since I quit my job in January, but the freedom is well worth the money. But you need some revenue recognition. Yeah. You came full yes, circle. I yes, I do. I, I need to recognize some revenue so I can pay my bills. Well, and then that, that also gets to recognize it. Yeah, generate revenue to recognize it to get the but even then cash flow is different entirely from that. So yeah. I might not recognize the revenue yet, but I still might get cash flow from the transaction. So uh accounting is complicated. That's why when I get to that point of complexity in my business, if I do. I'll just hire an accountant. I'm not going to learn all this shit. Anyway, um, that's probably about all we got time for today. I'll get this stuff uploaded to YouTube. Thanks for joining the call. I'll break it up into two different parts since apparently my microphone stopped working halfway through the call. But have a good weekend. I think I'm going to cancel next week because it's Black Friday. We're all going to be on vacation, et cetera. And then I'll start promoting again the following week in December. So we'll do that. Sounds good. Everyone have a nice, uh, a nice week. You too. Nice holidays for the next week. (laughs) Thank you. Take care.